I'm so excited to be doing this uh, short story on this particular day in South Africa, the 21st of March. It's a day on which we commemorate the struggles of the different heroes. Most of them are now resting, but their spirit lives on. And we have many people who have lost and people who shed their blood for us to be where we are. In particular, we think of the Sharpeville massacre. In particular, we think of the many lives that were lost in Langa. We think of the children of South Africa in the 70s leading to the painful experiences of 1976. But we are not the only people who went through suffering. Many, many years before our own story of struggle, of suffering, in West Africa, there were many people who were sold uh, to Western countries as slaves. They were sold by traders, white traders of the time, and they were also sold by unscrupulous chiefs of West Africa. And one particular case that I would like to share with you is that of Harriet Tubman, a woman that later earned herself the name of Moses. Those who are Christians will remember the old uh, Jews, will remember the story of the leader who led uh, the Israelites out of uh, Egypt, where the Israelites had been enslaved and were being oppressed by the Egyptians. So this particular woman, Harriet Tubman, is honored for having assisted more than 300 slaves in America to escape to freedom. She herself was a slave that had left West Africa through the infamous island of Goree and through a gate known as the Gate of No Return. But when she got to America, her family were tireless in assisting other people. And here she is, a wonderful woman, and on the side you will see the snake that symbolizes the snake that Moses uh, lifted in the desert when the Israelites were against him. We honor Harriet and through it all, in spite of the difficulties of the time, she never gave up. She worked hard as a slave. She had many tricks of trying to free the other slaves who were there. I would just like to share with you the fun story, interesting indeed, of how she uh, smuggled slaves uh, out of uh, slavery to freedom. She would be tasked to take bags of produce to the market and of course she was using a wagon. But if you look closely, the wagon has a compartment underneath, and it is in this compartment that the slaves were hidden. And there is the little gate to uh, the wagon. And so many songs that our brothers sang, like Wagon Wheels, Wagon Wheels, Carry Me Home, actually illustrate the state of affairs. And coming closer to South Africa, we were not slaves as such, but there is an equivalent term known as servitude, where the rights of somebody are taken away from that person. But closer to slavery in 1860, uh, was the story of the indentured Indian slaves. 
slaves that were brought into South Africa by the English governors who had colonized India and simultaneously had colonized South Africa. And when black South Africans were not willing to work in the sugarcane plantations owned by the English, the English then brought in Indians as slaves. And here I illustrate an Indian woman in the cane fields of, of Natal. Uh, something very painful. The Zulus could not be made to do this because firstly, they were not skilled in sugarcane farming. Secondly, they were free. They would work for a few days and then decide to go back to the villages. And the Indians had no such option. The flags that I have here were not there, but this is the current Indian flag and this is the current South African flag. They have just been put there to remind us that the story happens between Indians and South Africa. I am always intrigued and hurt and intrigued again when I look at where the Indian people are. Uh, this illustration, this artwork that I have here shows a young Indian man who is a vendor carrying on his shoulders a beam that has a basket of vegetables. In the South Coast villages of Amatlongwa and Amandawe, we saw many such Indian people on Saturdays selling produce and they would walk a distance of something like 20 kilometers right down to Scotland town selling so that they could get a living. And the greatest challenge to all of us today is to think about where the Indian economy is. This is where it started and some of us witnessed this in the 1950s. I said the Africans, the black Africans of the time, were not slaves, but the conditions under which they lived, under which we grew up, uh, the conditions were closer to slavery. In the 1950s, in 1953, the government of the time decided that education should not be free for black people. Education was the last struggle, that is really serious struggle. Black people, black Africans had resisted in many ways. They had lost their lives, but they could still go to school. And in 1953, the Bantu Education Act was the last nail in the coffin. In spite of that, black people struggled. And I have here an artwork that shows a vibrant science class, physical science class under a tree. Today we still have classes under trees, but for different reasons. Sometimes the roofs have been blown away. Sometimes the enrollments had grown uh, have grown overnight and planning needs to be adjusted. Here, this class was under the tree because there was no class. Black Africans had to pay for their education. Black South Africans had to pay for their teachers. They had to pay for resources. They had to pay school fees to such an extent that in many families, Girls were made to stay behind so that the little bit of money available was used to educate boys. So we have a physical science class here. And those of us 
who have studied physical science or who know something about physical science will recognize the formula uh, that is Einstein's formula uh, of energy, uh, which is there. Many doctors, engineers, artists, leaders were educated under trees, but they made it, which shows that we must not agree to be put down by circumstances of the time. Education is the salvation. Education is the bridge, it's the door that will lead us where we want to go. <clears throat> lead us to a state like this. As veterans, incidentally, I am a veteran of the struggle. As veterans, this is what we wish for the youth of today. We would like you, as young people, to be educated, to be confident, and with pride to hold your country in your hand. That is our flag. And we are all represented through this beautiful young girl. I mentioned the fact that today we commemorate. It's Human Rights Day, but very soon, in April, we will be celebrating our freedom. And then in June, we will celebrate the Bill of Rights. That actually enumerated the many rights or the different rights that the freedom that we gained through the vote uh, mean to us. I have decided to wind up my short address with this picture. It's a picture of rural women. And I would like us to reflect on rights as we look at this picture, because to me, it sums up everything. Women from work and the questions that we need to ask are questions like, is it decent work? Are the wages or the earnings decent? Do these women come home or go home in time after having worked a reasonable day and not be exploited by the employer? Are they safe on their way home? or are the people who will take advantage of them? And in particular, at the moment in South Africa, we are talking about gender-based violence. Are these mothers going to be victims of gender-based violence? When they get home, are they getting home to cook a meal and then rest and be happy? or will they find themselves in the middle of conflicts? These are such questions that we now need to ask, not necessarily about women, but about beings, human beings in South Africa. Uh, I do not mean to end the short address, the short story uh, with gloom, with darkness and gloom, but I would like to encourage us, South Africans, not to give up because our heroes did not give up. The name of this artwork is I'm Not Defeated. The original is a wooden carving that is in one of the museums in Paris. And what is written next to it is that it is a sculpture by an unknown Zulu, and they do not know what it is. If you look at it and turn it upside down, you will realize that it is in Chengula, 
a spoon for scooping tobacco. But I have used it to send a message that we should not be defeated. Here is a woman that's the head. She doesn't even have arms. She has been abused to the point that she doesn't even have arms. Her feet are tied down there, but she is not defeated. That's the message on this day to fellow South Africans. Let us not be defeated. Look at the grass at the bottom. There is grass that I have inserted there to say there should always be hope. There should always be new growth. When things are dark, you are free, you are allowed to fall and the following morning revive yourself. This is why we are here. We fought, we have not overcome many difficulties. Let us not be defeated. Thank you very much for listening to me.